Welcome everyone to another episode of How to Make Money in Stocks with Investors Business Daily. As you can see, Amy is not here this week, but she will be back for next week's episode. Now, before we get going, I want to encourage you to check out a new series we did on smart chart reading, which you'll find at investors.com slash investing show. It has a lot of great information about how to spot uh, patterns like the high tide flag, base on base and others, and what to look for inside those bases. So we encourage you to check that out. Now, on this week's show, we're going to talk about how to handle post-Brexit breakout stocks. But first, let's take a look at the market. Well, I hope you were wearing your neck brace this week as the market once again flashed that all-too-familiar whiplash action. After heading decisively south last week following the Brexit vote, the market bounced back this week. The Nasdaq closed higher for four straight days and managed to reclaim its 50-day line. Volume spiked on Wednesday and Thursday, indicating some enthusiasm for the rebound. And as we'll see later, we've seen several leading stocks breaking out. But while this action does mean it's time to test the waters, there are still reasons to be cautious. As Paul Whitfield noted in The Big Picture, one reason is the fact that we had a follow-through on the third day of a rally on Thursday. Normally, you look for a follow-through on day four or later. Also, follow-through days in June and July have a history of failing. Follow-throughs in August have a higher success rate. Another reason for caution is the fact that the charts for the indexes are rather ugly. If you look at this weekly chart for the NASDAQ since April, it doesn't inspire a lot of confidence. It's not clear which way the market is headed, and the string of false starts and head fakes that we've talked about on the show, we've seen a lot of those recently, makes you want to still tread carefully and limit your exposure and risk. In the news this week, big banks hiked their payouts after the Fed okayed their capital plans in the second round of stress tests. Tesla confirmed that regulators are investigating a fatal crash that occurred while a Model S was operating in self-driving mode. And the battle between Amazon and Walmart continued, with Amazon announcing it will hold its second annual Amazon Prime Day. Visit Investors.com for more details on these and other stories. Mobileye, which develops camera-based driver assistance technology, soared over 20% this week on news that it was teaming up with Intel and BMW to work on self-driving cars. A couple of other building-related stocks that we've discussed on the show recently also broke out, including Universal Forest Products. It closed the week up about 6% above its 8901 entry. Beacon Roofing Supply also broke out and remains within buy range, with its relative strength line in new high ground. There are a few top-rated stocks on deck to report soon, but some big names are set to report within the next couple of weeks, including Walgreens, PepsiCo, and financial giants BlackRock, J.P. Morgan Chase, Citigroup, and Wells Fargo. Next up, let's take a look at how to handle recent breakouts in this seesaw market. With the market continuing its roller coaster action following the Brexit vote, it's important to approach any new buys with a healthy amount of caution. So today, let's take a look at three simple steps that can help you take advantage of possible money-making opportunities, but still keep a safety net in place. First, avoid making impulsive buys. We all have different levels of risk tolerance and different time horizons, even different stock picking criteria. But the bottom line is make sure you have sound reasons for buying a particular stock. And don't just jump in on a whim because you see a stock moving. Here's a recent breakout from Gigamon. It cleared a buy point in this cup with handle on June 17th. Volume for the day was 208% higher than normal, which is well above, obviously, the 40% or greater spike that we look for. Plus, it was a highly rated stock with strong earnings and sales growth, and the number of funds with a position in Gigamon has been rising in recent quarters. At the time of the breakout, the market outlook was under pressure, meaning it was a time to proceed with caution. So let's say you decided to buy into Gigamon, and that brings us to step number two. Start with smaller initial positions in this kind of market. 
In any market, actually, it's a good idea to establish your full position in stages because it limits your exposure in case the breakout fails. But it's a particularly good idea in the kind of seesaw roller coaster market that we've seen recently. And so is step number three, which is to set a target defensive sell price. In other words, ask yourself, how much money are you willing to lose on this particular stock? Then use that price to cap your potential downside. And if your stock is rising in price, you may choose to raise your target sell price to make sure you lock in profits at a certain level. Now going back to Gigamon's daily chart, as of June 23rd, you were feeling pretty good about that buy. The stock was up about 12% and heavy volume had continued to kick in, pointing to institutional demand. But even when things are going well, you want to make sure that you stay grounded and have that defensive plan in place just in case. And that came in handy when the results of the Brexit vote came along. The NASDAQ and the S&P sold off sharply on June 24th following that vote. And Gigamon also fell. Depending on your target sell price, you may have sold or you may have held on to your shares. Maybe you had decided you wouldn't let that 12% gain drop below, say, a 5% profit to avoid round tripping. So as the market was melting down on June 24th, maybe you chose to lock in your remaining gains. Or maybe your defensive plan called for taking no more than, say, a 3% loss. In that case, Gigamon did not trigger a sell. It found support right around the buy point and has rebounded since then. Of course, in hindsight, it's easy to have or say you're going to have this simple three-step plan. It's a lot trickier to keep your emotions at bay and actually apply that in the real world in real time. But the more you practice that type of discipline, the easier and more effective it becomes. So if you're not doing something along those lines already, now is a good time to start. Think about how these three steps could be applied to some recent breakouts like those from LGI Homes, which has managed to show resilience and stay nicely above its recent buy point. Or NetEase, which also shot past a new entry this week. If you bought into that breakout, what defensive sell price would you set? Or maybe you have a higher tolerance for risk and decided to test the waters on a breakout from Cotivity, which went public in late May and just broke out of an IPO base. The stock is extended now, but how tight a leash would you keep on this kind of stock? Or perhaps you bought into a big cap, established company like Reynolds American or Verizon, both of which just broke out. And I actually covered both of those in the IBD stock analysis this week, which you can see on our website. Whatever the case, make sure you have a plan and some basic rules for handling breakouts in this type of seesaw market. It won't make the choppiness or surprises go away, but it will put you in a better position to manage them successfully. So before we wrap up, we want to let you know that Amy will be back with us next week, and we're looking forward to that return. In the meantime, please check out the Smart Chart Reading series, which you'll find at Investors.com slash Investing Show. Hope everyone has a wonderful and fun Fourth of July weekend, and we'll see you next week.